Good morning, everybody. We are fresh off a holiday weekend. And then before that, we are fresh off another trip. And then before that, we're fresh off another trip. We've been traveling a lot these days. We're waxed. We're vaxxed. Whoop. We're ready to drive around Southern California. I don't really understand where the waxed part of vaxxed comes from. It's just kind of funny. Just imagine if you had your pubic hair waxed uh, and then you're like... <laughs> imagine... <laughs> Like seven years ago when I used to wax yeah. my pubic hair. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, long time caller, first time waxer. Um, but uh, I'm, 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 uh, I, I think it's a fun turn of phrase. You so, think yeah, it's a fun turn of phrase? That's where it comes from. It's like ready for shot girl summer. Got it. Right? Ready to go to the we're, beach. We're so, but we're just, we're just vaxxed. So no, the only thing we are is vaxxed. Maybe, Although, there's, maybe there's something else we could say instead of waxed because it's clearly mm-hmm. that's like people look at us and they're, and they're like, like, why are you saying you are not waxed? waxed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are not waxed. You are the most hairy. You're bush out of control, boy. <laughs> Yeah, maxed and vaxxed. Maxed and vaxxed. That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Just like max energy. Schwaxed. That doesn't mean anything. No. Nope. Max energy. But we do have max energy. We're talking about traveling with kids. Talk today. about needing max energy. Mm-hmm. Traveling That's true. with kids. But yeah, it was a Woo-hoo. holiday weekend. We went down to Newport Beach. Yep. We had to some, visit some, some friends, friends in town. What? It was our first time like going to see friends because they were vaxxed. We were vaxxed. It's huge. And, you know, just don't let the kids lick the playground and uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully well, it'll be okay. So that brings us to what we want to talk about today, which is traveling with children, yeah. infants and kids, um, because we love traveling. It is one of our absolute favorite things. It's what brought Ned and I together. Mm-hmm. For those of you who have heard our like courtship story uh, our first kiss was like looking at Google Maps. Yes. Basically <laughs> talking about like vacations with our grandparents in, you know, uh, bi coastal island communities. Um, yeah, we realized both of our grandparents lived in like little islands. Yeah. We kind of, I called my grandparents' house the islands. And, and Ariel called it what? The, the island. The island. Yeah. Island, period because there's well there's many but they lived on they just lived the on one. just one <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah it's a big part of our relationship mm-hmm. you know our first ever trip together was like five months into dating mm-hmm. just up and drove around south africa for three weeks that's right for the world cup yeah and we had to book it after we'd been dating for like 90 days yeah or something like that it was that was like a knew they were the one when yeah. I was like, hey, do you want to come with me to visit my friend Chris in my South eyes, Africa? My eyes like lit up. I was like, like, yeah. Fuck, yes, <laughs> I want to do that. Uh, yeah. And the fact that we were both working for free, that kind of made it like. It made it easy to be like, Peace, easier guys. to take three weeks off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Back when, <laughs> back when you could legally you hire it. interns for free. Probably was never legal, but. You just, know, just not as frowned upon. It hadn't. There hadn't been court cases about it yet. Mm, yeah, fair enough. I uh, worked for free for a long time. To be long thirty-four, time. I'm almost thirty-four. Your birthday is coming up very soon. My birthday's soon. coming up. You're gonna be thirty-four. Well, this is so. This is the the period of time in the year when I am two years older than Ned. That's uh, true. Yeah. So I'm your I'm your older w- woman. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It was like very a cougar. <laughs> Were you cougar in me? I'm pretty sure I'm not cougar in you. Well, not now. I'm I'm a I'm a cougar in my I'm a leopard. Are you? No, that's not I what they call. I think you could take care of I'm yourself. I'm a leopard daddy. I think you could take care of yourself. Yeah. But let's that's get true. back to the a, a task at hand here. I don't know. I'm kind of having fun talking about cougars. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of cougars, we went to the zoo. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we went to the San Diego Zoo. Yep. The prior weekend. It's been great. Saw a polar bear swimming up Oh close. my gosh. Highlight of my weekend mm-hmm. was that funny polar bear. When Ned and I were first thinking about kids, Ned did not want he he wasn't ready for kids. And I and I was. I mean, back to the two years older situation. Yeah. And, and also, you right. know, when women we were 20. have a have a, a like a biological clock yes that that lives in their uterus I, I don't know if if everybody knows this but there is an actual clock that the doctor checks up until you're 35 oh, and after really? after you're 35 then they actually take it out and they say 
like you can no longer have children. No, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm totally I'm joking. That's looking at me like I'm saying something I real. I mean, I knew there wasn't a minute hand and a second hand, but I was like, oh, is it like a hormone level? No, no, this does not exist. You're like 33 and you're like, I have the uterus of a 26 year old. You guys have heard me talk about this. I I think that, pe- that, that women can have kids until they are as old as they want. Mm-hmm. You know, it, there is no limit. It is just what you're, what you feel that your body is ready for. Yeah. Um, you know, I have many, many friends and acquaintances who have had kids after 35, after, you know, they're 40 years old. Yeah. Especially um, modern medicine. Exactly. Making it safer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we were 22 and you were two years older than me, I was like, hot. Ariel is worldly. She's experienced. She's really cool. And what is it now? Well, now it's still hot, but also there's this like added like pressure about, you know, babies and like, you know, uh, that sort of thing of, you know, the biological clock. For sure. Which is neither here nor there. But I think when we are 30... What if I was not as ready to have kids? Then well, I you weren't have... ready to have kids when you were 30. Yeah, I was yeah, moderately, you know, kind of getting well, on board slowly. Part yeah. of the reason why you weren't ready to have kids was because uh, you didn't think that we would be able to travel. I did. I figured we had to get all of our 20s stuff in while we got it. Ned had this we had bucket to, list like... of places that he wanted to go. Yeah. And I was like, babe, we have like... It may be two years before we're going to start having kids. We cannot travel to every single country in the world. Mm-hmm. Like, you got to understand that you can travel with children. And you didn't believe me. I didn't. I thought an international trip with a toddler would be a disaster. And you know what? It turns out it wasn't that bad. No. We've done what? Multiple international Multiple trips. Multiple international trips with, with, with kids. With yeah. kids. I guess well, we specifically haven't done with it with... Us. Finn, yep. Finn, our our, our pandemic. sweet pandemic baby. Mm-hmm. But with Wes, we have been all over the place. Um, what was our first big, big trip with Wes? Probably London and Paris, right? I think so. He was uh, under a year old. Um, we traveled with my mom. Was he really under a year yeah, old? It could, that because, was like the 10 month mark? Yeah, it was like February. Uh, yeah, it was like February. Wow. Yeah. We went on a, how long was that flight? It was like seven hours or something like I that. I mean, from LA. I think oh, it's a bit yeah. more. I think it's more like 10 hours. Yeah, it was a long flight. But yeah, let's talk about a long international flight with a toddler or an infant. Yeah. Wow. What do you do? Well, um, okay, so... Our tip number one. Tip number one, wear them. Wear them. Wear them. And book it when it's nighttime. You think, you imagine, oh, you're going to have this horrible night where they're going to be up all the time and they're not going to get sleep and they're going to be crying and waking up everyone on the plane and... That was sort of true. Yeah, it's sort of true. Mm -hmm. But it's way easier to deal with infants when they're sleeping Mm -hmm. rather than when they're awake and getting bored on the plane. Yeah. I think. I I would tend to agree. You have a little bit of tears here and there as you're trying to calm them down, but they just nap on your chest. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like with travel days, normally an international travel day or even just like a long domestic travel day, the day itself is kind of a wash, you know? And so if you're trying to schedule around like nap times and things like that, um, there's inevitably going to be delays and, you know, you're not going to get the, the nap that you want because you're on the, on the go. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so when you finally get on the plane and you're thinking that, you know, you've, you've had this grand plan to have, to have like a fully rested child on the plane so that they can like play Mm -hmm. and, you know, like be, a, a, a sweet human being, um, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. Just schedule it during a nap time or during the, the night time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the real tricky thing is once they wake up from the night and it's an international flight, then sometimes there's like a whole like three more hours that they have to like wake up and kind of get going. Right. Get entertained. Um, but, you know, lots of lots of baby books if they're a mm-hmm. little bit older. Mm-hmm. You know, that might be a time where you want to bend your normal screen time rules mm. to yeah. kind of help get through the flight. We're kind of a a, 
a policy of like, you know, that's just, we just got to get through it. Yeah. It's, uh, when it comes to traveling, that is, that is when we, that is when we allow screens the most Yeah, is, is during like long car rides. Um, we have, mm -hmm. uh, an iPad that we call red game because mm -hmm. it's, it has a, uh, like a, you know, a foam case around it that is bright red. And, uh, and so yeah, Wes calls it his red game. Can we talk about the scourge that is blippy for a moment? Oh my goodness. If anyone here listening is a parent. You may have heard of uh, this man, very entertaining guy, you know, very just killing the YouTube game as a fellow creator. I can appreciate it and respect it as a parent. He's when I see it. my kid understanding what B-L-I-P-P-I -P -P -I, like and subscribe. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Spells. Wes said that in the bath the other night. Yeah. He goes B-L-I-P-P-I. And I was like, because sorry, the man what? spells his name at the end of every episode. It's genius. So parents can't it's actually just be genius. like, we're not going to turn on B L I P P I today. And they're like, Blippy. And they're like, Blippy. <laughs> Blippy. I mean, he's fine. He's actually not super terrible for kids. I think no, it's I like, think it's actually, actually a, does educational a great program. things. Uh, you, you don't like it because your friend, uh, Danny doesn't like it. That's true. It uh, is kind of a fun thing that we yeah, like to bash he finds together. It, he finds it sort of, uh, I don't know, annoying, but you know, yeah. it is a ch child's program. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's gonna, it's not like, it, you know, your typical content. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I think it's objectively like a little annoying for adults, but you know, it's also, they learn stuff. They do learn stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, Wes learned all about recycling the other day. Right. Um, but we, yeah. So red game is just an iPad that we have disabled everything on, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because Wes knows how to use all the buttons on everything. Um, that's just, I feel like that's just technology and kids, you know, you could oh, like, yeah. he, he can find all sorts of different things on my phone. You know, he, he'll, he'll, we, we also have like the Disney plus app. Um, but the iPad doesn't have internet. And so it's just like the downloaded content that we have. That's one way we can control it. So he's not yes. suddenly like you're hearing, what are you watching? Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're, we, it's, it's like a very tightly held, uh, you know, it's got games mm -hmm. and it has like a few programs that mm -hmm. he can watch on Disney plus. Um, but he has discovered YouTube kids, which, yeah, uh, I'm glad they do make YouTube funny. kids because he very quickly learned how to click thumbnails and advance to future episodes. It's, if he doesn't like it, he'll just move on to the next one. It's unreal. Just like all of us. <laughs> I know. I know. It's so intuitive. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, keep watching to the end because at the end we're going to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that trip to London and Paris. Yes. So what did we, what are some like, what are some things that you remember about that trip that we did well? Well, we brought your mom. Mm -hmm. That was huge. Helpful. <laughs> so it was actually Would a work trip. Recommend. It was a work trip for us. Yeah. Um, which it, if we hadn't brought my mom, it would not have been possible for us to work. Um, Cause we, we had to like do. Uh, We're employed by London and Paris. Yes. This is what, by the, the tourism. Uh, London and Paris tourism board. Yeah. To but, encourage people to travel to London, Paris. Yeah. But we like had to go to certain places and there were certain like evening commitments that we had yeah. uh, that we couldn't bring Make kids to. Make it look to. natural. Mm -hmm. Oh, we just stumbled into this. Amazing. Oh, look at this amazing wow, so cool. restaurant. Oh, it's so, so wonderful. Yeah. But it was actually very cool. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was fantastic. All these awesome experiences for us. Oh we my gosh. We got to do graffiti in, a, mm -hmm. in the Banksy tunnels. Yeah. Lake which, Street tunnels. Like you can't bring an infant to mm -mm. like no. <laughs> a spray painting I'd frenzy. The thing that you have to be ready for the most is dealing with the time difference yes because even if you're going like one or two time zones mm -hmm. you know say you're going east coast west coast in the usa like that it it really can mess with their it really their really cycles. does when we were traveling to new york like four or five times a year um we would just keep wes on la time yeah because it just wasn't worth it to to change the time zone for him. So we'd put him to bed at 9, 9.30 at mm -hmm. night, New York time. Mm -hmm. And then 
he would sleep until 6.30 New York time. No, he often slept later. He often would sleep later, but sometimes... We like would go to bed later thinking that he was going to sleep till, yeah. I don't know, 10 New York time. Now, this is supposed to be a success story. Oh, it is? Not, yeah, not like a, I'm, I, I'm encouraging people to keep them on their original time. Well, sure. I think that is better because there's no way we would have gotten him to go to sleep at 6 p.m. No, New York time. No, absolutely not. Yeah, but, I mean. But here's where I'm going with this, Ariel, is make sure, put... Blackout curtains on the room. That's huge. That's why he was waking up. You yeah. get blasted with that beautiful Manhattan sunlight. <laughs> That's that. a big one. That's a really big one. There is. So we discovered this. Uh, uh, these like blackout curtains that you could like stick onto windows mm -hmm. or doors for that matter. Like we, we actually we were in. Um, uh, San Diego recently and for some unknown reason they had windowed doors that had no uh, yeah no the like doors had like full frosted glass on them facing the sunrise and we're like in what world do I want my bedroom door to be fully frosted glass? Yeah, with no shade, you know? And so yeah. both the kids were waking up with the sun every day. You could actually, you could see someone's silhouette like moving behind the bedroom. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. It's a little kinky. Oh, I I only <laughs> saw Wes, so. Yeah, that um, wasn't, uh, you know, a little less so. Yes. I saw you at one point and I was like, ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. But yeah, you got to watch out where your shadows are. <laughs> yes. If, yeah. But yeah, so these so these blackout curtains, they they make them in like a pretty big size, but they fold down really small. Um, and we we brought these to Australia with us, too. Mm -hmm. And those were they, they were super useful because similar thing, frosted glass like door to the uh, to the room. And you're like, what are you thinking? Yeah. You know, like <laughs> toilets flush backwards and the doors are see through. What gives? <laughs> but that so Australia, when we went to Australia and um, uh, and Singapore mm -hmm. with Wes, um, we did. I mean, obviously, we had to switch him over to Australia time because we were yeah. there for like two weeks or three weeks or something like that. Yeah. And they're uh, pretty adaptable. I mean, after mm -hmm. a couple days of being upset, just like, you know, every single human that travels in. 12 hour times difference. It's called jet lag. Yeah. yeah we all felt awful too. It's like they, they just kind of hop on board and yeah. are like normalized to uh, the new time zone. Yeah. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah. You kind of, you just move their naps around a little bit to, you know, make them tired at different times. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is, it is not the most, uh, joyful few days yeah. when you're switching them over to a different time zone. Cause yeah, they're cranky. You're cranky. Um, but it's going to be fine and they do switch over, you know, they're humans just like the rest of us mm -hmm. and we're all adaptable and we sleep when it's nighttime and we are mm -hmm. awake during the mm -hmm. daytime. Um, I mean, most of us, I, I know that, uh, <laughs> Becky, uh, for, for one person that I know who is, is awake during the night. <laughs> oh yeah. How oh, late yeah. does she stay up? Oh, she's, she just hasn't saw me. Oh, mm -hmm. that's different. Yeah. I'm sorry for her. <laughs> um, Eugene too. Yeah. Um we do not have insomnia. No. Ned we and sleep I pretty well. the second the sun goes down, we're like, oh, I'm sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> Parents go to bed at 9 30. I can sometimes I I will be awake a little bit. I think if there's something super stressful going on, mm -hmm. I'll like be awake a little bit, but it's not I wouldn't call it insomnia if I've no, never you just stayed have, like, awake past midnight or one. You have like a restless mind. Mm-hmm. Which journaling helps. Journaling does help. I've noticed things that do not help me go to sleep is uh, if I have ice cream too late before bed. Uh, yeah, you and our child, hun. Yeah, like, so like a big old download of sugar into I, I swear, my belly hole. As Wes gets like just like older and older and older, I see how he, you and he are so similar <laughs> in so many ways. Just like if you give Wes even a tiny bit of sugar, mm. he is off the wall. You really can see it. It's like and it is the same you're thing tracking with his you. Glucose graph as it just spikes up. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it is the same thing with Ned. Like you give this man 
sugar, like, you know, actual sugar, like ice cream or candy. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about you right now. No, I know. Uh, and you I'm are off the you. wall. I'm you're, off the wall. It's, it's like I'm your bouncing, body baby. reacts in this, mm -hmm. in this way. Like it doesn't, it doesn't happen to me. Let's go. It, th that doesn't Let's have do to be my, -ups. like my body just sort of is like, Oh sugar. We like this. This is <laughs> nice. And your body's like, Oh my God. Oh, Rachel has something to say. You know what else disrupts your Alcohol. Oh, alcohol is bad for you. But Rachel, everyone knows that. <laughs> Do we really need to get into it? But yeah, if you don't know, even though you pass out from drinking, mm -hmm. when your body is sleeping uh, from alcohol, say you've had, you know, even honestly, even one glass of wine can still cause these kind of negative sleep effects. But let's say three. Sure. Let's say three. Uh, three is certainly enough to make you be like, I'm tired. Yeah. You're like, you're tired. <laughs> right? You you brush your teeth and then it's you're like, like in bed and you're like, oh I'm my God. fast asleep. Wow, I passed out at 930. But while you're sleeping, your brain waves are not doing their normal thing. They're kind of mm -hmm. doing like boozy things. And then when the alcohol clears your system, you'll often, does this ever happen to you? You wake up you wake at up. like 3, 4 a.m. And that's when you're kind of ready for normal sleep again. Mm -hmm. But now you don't have much much of the night left. So right. if, uh, so if you really want to feel well rested, have a, a strong nighttime routine, avoid alcohol, caffeine and sugary things before bed and blue light and blue light. Of course, uh, -huh. uh, go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time every day. And over time, your body will start to normalize. How funny Drink lots of water that we know all of these things. So great and yet we that do I can say it, but them. we don't do it. We, Ned and I do not do these things. The we are thing, looking at our phones before bed. Mm -hmm. We, well, I, I, you know what I've done recently? What? I put my phone in the closet. Well, that's not recent. You've been doing that since we moved into our house three mm, years that's ago. That's true. Yeah. I've been doing this for three years, but you know what I want to talk about? recently uh -huh. is i put my phone in the closet all right <laughs> no, go on tell us about know. your phone have, in the closet have people people to people maybe they know that about me but i think it's like if you avoid you w looking at your phone in the place where you go to sleep mm -hmm. then you can avoid all those stressful uh you know things absolutely or no, delightful you, things you have a very um healthy sleep habits i feel I try because mm -hmm. it doesn't always work out well for me. You can, mm -hmm. I feel like you can fall asleep anytime. I can. I am a, I am just a sleeper. Yeah. I, I can sleep anywhere. I can sleep on a bus. I can sleep in a car. Okay. I can sleep in any bed. Do you think when you get older, you're going to have like just buzzsaw, like snoring just going on? I hope not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my snoring won't bother me is all I'm <laughs> wow. saying. That's so considerate. Uh, of you. Yeah. Really? The question is, do you think I'm going to have buzz sauce? Oh, snoring? I hope not. I'm going to be, uh, but I jabbing I, you in I the am, ribs. At I night. am definitely, definitely going to be like my parent, like my mom and my grandfather who fall asleep <laughs> in like, a chair yeah. in front of the television. <laughs> and um, the, the like head back falling asleep, you know yeah. that you can fall asleep anywhere. Absolutely. Then. I almost did last night mm. when you really wanted to finish like the second episode oh, of that right. show. Yeah, you wanted to go to bed. And I was like, I was like falling asleep on the couch. Oh no. Well, because I also, I don't like, I like to, I don't like to go to sleep alone. While, while you're yeah. doing something else, like no, then they are very much like, go, like to to go to sleep together. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, honestly, and it's not a sex thing. It's just a like, we just like going to yeah, sleep together. Maybe a cuddling thing. Yeah. It's a cuddly thing. But like, we brush our teeth together mm -hmm. and we talk about uh, our days and then, uh, and then we like climb into bed. Good night, hun. Light yep. off. And I noticed that if we don't go to sleep together, oftentimes you kind of lose track of time. A little bit easier oh, when you're by yourself. Right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm like, like if oh, you're... I'm just going to play a little bit of video games. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh no, it's 1045. Yeah. What have I done? Which for anybody else, that would be like, oh, 1045. Time for bed. Like, no, no biggie. But for us, it's like, oh no, oh, I'm only no. going to get five hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will say that video games are another like sleep trigger for me. But to, that make you fall asleep no, or make you not fall asleep? Make me not fall asleep. Well, yeah, I was going to say, but sleep trigger sounds like 
you know, a trigger that makes you sleep. Mm, yeah, so. I guess I that's not a good way to say it. Uh, but yeah, but it's it's the type of video game. If it's something very like fast reflex kind right. of like uh you know so reactive right now that for you that would be smash right super is smash your... brothers i've noticed if i play it right say i play it till 10 and then i try and immediately go to sleep five minutes later no it takes me a good 20 minutes to like calm mm -hmm. down but the witcher but the witcher which i've also been playing lately is a you know like man half the time i'm just riding my little horse going from town to town just kind of <laughs> chatting like, with all chatting the with people talking townies. with the townies it's like <laughs> I'm not even big on the monster fighting, which I guess that gets a little stressful. But so much of the game is just sort of story based and uh -huh. riding your little horse. And it's like <laughs> it's a very like kind of calming game. And you get into the storylines, you know. Yeah. There's this farmer that like got disowned because he was gay. I'm like, dang, that's like a oh. pretty, pretty intense storyline. Yeah. For the for a video game. That's pretty cool. For sure. I feel bad for him. And so I'm helping him out. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Great. <laughs> Happy to hear it. Yeah. I, I'm I I do not participate in Ned's uh video games, especially yeah. the boring ones. I'm waiting for the RPG that you kind of like get a little invested in, like a movie, where uh -huh. you're like, What are we gonna do to help this farmer? But it's uh it's it's probably not gonna happen. I at, after I had kids I got way less into the like more story based ones. Hmm. Miles always makes fun of me because he's like, wait, you say that you played uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, but actually you never got past the first like, area, the first level. I was like, well, yeah, just kind of walking around in the snow line. It's a pretty cool game. And I like it. I learned how to shoot my gun. Is that, <laughs> like, is that the one with the kid? Oh no, that's God of War. Oh, okay. I'm a little farther along in that one, but that's 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 a good game. That's very beautiful. Huh. Good story too. Um, but I just yeah, I don't have enough time to sink my teeth into these like deeper story games. You know, mm -hmm. you can put like a hundred hours into some of these games and have a very like. You know, nobody got time for that. I, yeah, I don't. But uh, as a result, then I just play half an hour of Super Smash Brothers here and there. Uh -huh. And then I look back, you know, over, over a period of years, I've played a hundred hours of Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. So, it, you know, maybe, maybe I would be like better off if I had a more like deeper, you know, deeper story experience. Rachel and I were just chatting about uh, like, how to travel on a plane with two because mm. so our producer Rachel has two babies two twins toddlers now um but she, you she was traveling back and forth to New York uh solo Whoa. with two kids Whoa. now there uh there are two ways to travel on a plane with kids there you can wear them and if uh if your kid is under two years old you do not have to buy a seat for them but it's pretty much across the board for all airlines. Once your kid is two, you do have to buy a seat for them. Um, and even though it is an added expense, it is often worth it to just buy the seat for them anyway, even if they're under two, mm -hmm. because if they are sleeping and you haven't decided to just wear them the whole time, um, you can pop them in their car seat and you strap that car seat into the extra seat and then they just have their own spot. And it is amazing. Especially if you're traveling with a partner, because then you can get the whole row of three. Exactly. Just kind of lock that down. Exactly. Rather than you have a little. Uh, yeah. And then, then when your kid is awake, then you can like just have them play in the seat. I mean, it. yeah, it's so nice. But we've also. So once uh, once Wes was two and had his own seat, we uh, we tried the Stokey jet box. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember that? that oh thing? yeah, that's a really cool invention. That was a cool, cool thing. So it, it is this, it is this box that fits under the seat, um, and so you know for takeoff and landing. And then when you are in the air and it's like time for your kid to sleep, nap, or if you're traveling at night, like we like to do, um, you set it up and the the box turns into a like it turns the seat into a bed. Yeah. for your toddler you, it goes in the space in between the seat and the seat in front and then it goes and it oh like my gosh. lifts up and then creates basically extra seat and then you can put a pad that comes with it mm -hmm. on top of it and now all of a sudden 
You got yourself an in-flight bed system. Yeah. I mean, for a small person. For a small child. Like yeah. it could not be for an adult. No. But I mean, so great. And and it's But such can a- you imagine three of them in a row with an adult sized mattress? <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I think that's just. I think that's just called you got like Stokey adult get, system. Get yourself to first class and just get like a lay down bed. Yeah, I mean, but, I, um, I, don't, I haven't run the numbers, but uh, uh, yeah, maybe, 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 maybe three coach class seats are equal or to one, one first class seat. I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps I don't know. the free champagne might tip it over. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were just talking about sleeping and alcohol, but um, traveling on an airplane with kids, like. People are going to be doing it a lot more now. We've had a bunch of pandemic babies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, flights are are getting going again. People are going to travel travel to see their parents, uh, and they don't know how to travel with kids yet. So, all right, walk me through how you travel with a kid, like getting yeah. to the airport. Um, Here's you know. a big tip: is have like a Russian nesting doll have sequential layers of toys that you can unbox as the flight goes on. That is, that's genius. Yeah. Because it's a long flight and it's tough to keep their minds occupied with the same toy Mm -hmm. for two hours. So you get, you start with your books say, right. And then you, you bust out the shaky toy and then what's that? You're getting bored child. Well, what do I have here? Look at these stickers. A whole other zipper bag full of stickers and it feels new it feels exciting feels mm-hmm. fresh yep there's a lot to like yeah um but i mean first of all you you want to go start to finish first you gotta strap everybody in the car if yep. you're you know back in the day we'd probably take a ride share because yeah airport parking is always tricky right exactly and you're often just but you got to bring the car seat mm-hmm. so this is something that uh didn't even occur to me when we were first traveling with wes is that if you choose not to travel with your car seat, like on the plane, you're going to need a car seat on the other end. Yeah. Uh, and if you ever want to get in a taxi, you or could a ride be share, fully you stranded at the seat. airport with no car seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have not thought about that. Now there are some, uh, like, you know, it's like, uh, Uber, but for parents or whatever, where it's like, there are some selections in uh-huh. certain cities, big cities like New York, especially where you can pick a car that will come with a car seat. That's huge. But they often don't have car seats for infants. I didn't feel super safe with those. No? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm, okay, well, agree to disagree. I thought it, they were pretty good. Pretty good seats, you know, standard issue. I would recommend just bringing <laughs> bringing your own seats. We we use the Up a Baby system, and so you just travel with, like, one yeah. of the Up a Baby strollers, and you click that car seat in. Um, and I, and you're good to go. I guess I'm the one carrying the car seat. That's probably why I'm like, yeah, it's, it's awesome. They offer this thing where you can leave the car seat at home. Uh, to be a dad in an airport is to be a pack horse. You yeah, are lugging so around true. everything. Absolutely. Well, to be anybody you, in an airport, you're just lugging your stuff yeah, around. Yeah, that's right. Even if you're 22, you're still you're like, got your back, you got your back, you yeah. got your thing. And like, if you know, if you're a parent, you're like a full on car seat. Now, here's the thing. Oftentimes, airlines will let you check car seats for free. That's right. And strollers for free. And stro- strollers yeah, car could seats check and for strollers. Free. You don't need to pay the extra bag fee. But what you can do, you can slip a couple of clothes into the car seat oh, bag. Oh, yeah. We've only, we have been caught doing this space. one time. They, they were, they like looked, they opened the car seat bag and they were like, there's other stuff in here. And we were like, yeah, so... And they were like, you're not allowed to have other stuff. We were like, did not know that. All of our other bags are already through the thing. So you're going to have to let it go. And she mm-hmm. was like, fine, but don't do it again. Wow. You know, but like you can fit so much in the, in the, like the concave part mm-hmm. of that car seat bag. Yeah. Oh my you God. You can fit a whole baby's worth of clothing. Yeah, exactly. And- yeah. So, you know, uh, if they check, sorry guys, but it's a great spot to shove a bunch of stuff. I just like felt like a shock of of stress of somebody not allowing a bag on an airplane. And I realized that as much as I've missed traveling, I don't think I've missed airports very much. Well, we did used to travel with Wes and Bean. Oh, yeah. We would travel with the dog and the baby. Do not recommend. Oh, my goodness. I remember we, I was in the airport in 
uh, Seattle. And uh, you, I think we're, we we had met in Seattle. This was when you were um, on tour. And so mm. we had met in Seattle. Oh, and yeah, I, I remember was, that. I was, that taking, was nice. I was taking Bean and Wes home. Right. Um, and so I, I decided to wear Wes and just check the stroller because I didn't want to fuss with holding Wes and trying to break down the stroller and put it into the bag and gate check it. Um, I just decided I would just go light. Um, but when you're traveling with two people, I do recommend car seat, strap it into the stroller, push the stroller around the concourse Mm -hmm. and then gate check the stroller. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I was just wearing Wes and, uh, and Bean, we had him, uh, approved so that he could kind of like sit under underneath the seat. And so I was taking him to go to the bathroom and he didn't want to go in that like special pet room. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was really far away. Mm -hmm. And so on the way there, he stopped in the middle of the concourse. And I was like, why are you stopping? Why are you stopping Bean? This is so silly. There's people everywhere. And he starts to take a poo in the middle of the concourse. The disrespect. It was <laughs> so mortifying. And I had nothing to pick it up with mm. because they have the little baggies in those in those rooms. So I didn't like bring a bag with me. Oh, no. And so I had to like <laughs> I had to leave the poop in the middle of the concourse and just like Oh my God. I do not remember this. Because <laughs> I wasn't because you were there. Oh it was my just me. gosh. And so I had to leave the poop in the middle of the no, concourse. You didn't. And I had to run to no. like the nearest um, restaurant to grab a napkin. Oh my God. And so I Ew. run to grab a napkin. I'm wearing the baby. You're wearing I'm the baby the this dog. whole time. I'm wearing the baby this whole time. And I'm uh, holding the dog who is still pooping. Oh my God. He's like, he's just he's so like squeezing it out. Like squeezing it out as I'm dragging him across the concourse. <laughs> oh and I'm just leaving a trail of like soggy <laughs> poos all over the their like squeaky floor <laughs> and I'm trying to get a napkin and then I have to go back Bean. with the baby. I'm like holding the baby in the ergo and I'm like, and I've got the dog, you know, like close to me because it's a crowded concourse mm-hmm. and I'm like scooping up poop as I go, at, you know, like leaving a trail of like, you know, poo because I don't have anything to clean it up with. And then one of the custodians, there's like a man literally standing with his like, you know, uh, like push cart thing, just watching me do this. <laughs> and I, I was just so mortified and I'm like, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh I cannot believe that this happened. And the guy looks at me and he's like, it's not the first time this has mm-hmm. happened. Like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> he's like, like, it's totally fine. Really? You got to do what you got to do, you, but you I'll take care of it. And bringing like, a wild animal oh, <laughs> into man. an airport oh, man. led to, we in an unexplained place. We really. uh, leave being at home these days. Yeah. And after that situation, <laughs> it was just a bit. That was more than I could handle. Really, Didn't exactly truly. provide you emotional support in that moment. <laughs> like most people are worried about the kid having a blowout, which valid concern. Oh yeah. You know, bring clothes. That airport. Bring like three types of extra clothes. Changing yeah. table is not all it's cracked up to be. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like very cramped. Are you oh talking boy. about the one on the airplane? Yeah, or? the one on the airplane. They have a little flip down thing. Yeah, they got the flip down thing. Which watch uh, watch baby's fingers when you do that thing mm. because it, that thing can be really dangerous. Um, but uh, yeah, bring two extra sets of clothes for the baby and bring an extra set of clothes for yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. That is something that we did not do the first year. (laughs) The first year with Wes, we did not bring extra clothes for ourselves because why would you bring extra clothes for yourself? You're not going to shit yourself. But guess what? Like (laughs) the poop gets everywhere. (laughs) I mean, when we were at a friend's house this weekend, you got poop on you. That's true. And thank goodness we had like an entire suitcase in our car. I looked so fresh too. I had on like white sneakers and white shirt and i was like man i look so good i'm about going to the beach and then i had poop on my white shirt and i was like oh man do you remember the trip coming back from new york this was february 2020 arguably like a really bad time to be going to new york but (gasps) we didn't know it we didn't know how bad it was at the time right and as we get off the plane we're like landing in burbank and Wes like vomits all over me and we're like oh no no, this was that was like 
the middle of the flight. Okay. It yeah. wasn't I like it was right before we end, landed. No, yeah. because we had to deal with vomit because he vomited multiple times on that flight. Yeah. And we had to deal with like the smell and the mess for another two or three hours after yeah. that. Mm-hmm. He vomited all over both of us. Yes. So we're like, oh no, we're like piling like kind of bundling up our t-shirts i'm like shirt off in the back of the plane like hey <laughs> I'm like, sorry i just poor little guy was sleeping on our chest i know i remember uh, yeah he like must have gotten norovirus on the playground in new york yeah and then, this was- I, and then I like was vomiting the next day then you were vomiting the next day and then our nanny was vomiting the day after that yeah it was bad it was that was, a, was that was COVID a really rough because it was really just about the vomiting yeah uh, but there's there's germs floating floating everywhere there's yeah germs everywhere. germs other than coronavirus germs mm-hmm. there's other viruses out there mm-hmm. what yeah. i know it's crazy always seems like they get sick on the plane or just when you're traveling. Yeah. You know, just different location out in public. But we're excited, you know, to be traveling again. We haven't dipped our toes into a plane flight quite yet, but I think it'll I think it'll come this summer. Mm-hmm. We'll try it. Yeah. And um, we'll be yeah. doing. OK, so what are we going to be doing for traveling on a plane this summer with our kids? I think I'm going to be worried. We have non-vaccinated children. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Wes will be wearing a mask the whole time. Mm-hmm. We'll be wearing masks the whole time, so obviously. But Finn can't wear a mask yet. So yeah. my plan with Finn is to, w- we won't go the car seat route. I will probably just wear him the whole time. Yeah, have him real snuggled up Real in close your to your chest so that I can like put up the, put up the hood of the carrier and just protect him from, uh, from, you know, other people the whole time, I guess. Yeah. I think we'll try and keep it to shorter flights to start. Yeah. Or if you're traveling with a car seat, you could put one of those car seat covers over it. Yeah, that could be good. Well, I'm excited. You know, we'll see. We'll see. It's It'll be nice to be traveling again. Hopefully these tips helped you out. Uh, if you had a, a question for us, email us at babestepsadvice at gmail.com. Like and subscribe, rate us five stars. And hey, check out our cookbook, the Date Night Cookbook. We've got Lots of different meals for two or for families or for parties, whether you're single or married AF. It's got a little something. So take a take a piece of us in your kitchen. Pre-order it today at datenightcookbook.com. We um and you can be the first to get it before it's out to the general public. September. Life's a journey. <laughs> take baby steps. Mm-hmm.